Yo, what's up guys? This is your review of the game versus MBU. Fortunately, we played .gg and op.gg and the new client didn't have any of the matches, so I can't really look at the spectator mode version, so we're just going to go through Twitch. Really janky, unfortunately, but yeah, I can still do macro like this, so yeah. Alright, uh, this game, you guys drafted a pretty strong siege composition with Zara, Caitlyn, Victor, uh, bot lane versus Jin brand should be able to win pretty pretty handily because you guys have more range than they do, and then mid lane it just becomes whoever can if Victor gets ahead then he just gets lane priority if Malzar gets ahead then he gets lane priority, uh, but Victor does need to be careful of overextending because of the fact that Zach can gank quite easily. So what that means is Victor should look to get his Hexclaw upgrade as fast as possible, shove out the wave, and then take Raptors or go for vision on the side of the lane whenever possible. Okay, so pretty standard clear, leash red, headbutt, and then go just do a full clear. Top lane's not covers Jace, Maokai loses, is going to lose early just because Ranger is melee, and then... <sighs> Top lane's pretty campable but just because Jace is an immobile melee champion. This is really good what Abdul is doing here is handing off the early blue buff just so Victor can get some early lane dominance and get his X score upgrade ASAP. That's really nice. Uh like at, at this point, like just having the blue buff just means mid laner mid lane completely swings into Victor's favor, and there's nothing Malzahar can do to outshove Victor here. Victor just plays the wave game and just shoves Malzahar whenever he wants to, or you can choose to freeze the wave in front of his turret because Malzahar is pretty poor wave play. Yeah, so as I was so here you could just take the boss cone over to get a gank. Uh, Malachi just used W, so you don't want to do it just yet. Yeah. Because you, you don't want to walk over the ward that he put down. Nice. This is really good timing. This is, this is really good timing, what you guys did here. This is perfect. So, the, like, everything was done perfectly here. So, yeah. Uh, here you should push because the lane's already pushing. There's no chance to set up a freeze. No, you couldn't set up a freeze here. It was already pushing, so you were, you had to push it. This is the only option. Now, what you could do is, because Jace is going to have to TP back, if you guys really wanted to, you could try and cheese him, but it's it's not worth investing extra time. Mac, I should go recall. It was unfortunate, because you don't have TM at to back, yeah. This, this would be an ideal time to back, because there's nothing to clear, but... Instead, you need a path all the way down. I don't know if heal was already used or what, but I don't, I don't know how Zarya should ever get that low in that matchup. That's probably just poor lane play, that you got poked down low enough for that to happen. Okay, so Zach has already gotten one kill, so this is warded. Yep, it's warded. Ward just died. So Zach already got the one kill, so he's on his way to just becoming a huge front line. Okay, so Victor gets the early shove in. This is this is huge. Like all that EXP and minion wave that's going to waste is enormous. So this run is kind of iffy because Victor's damage is quite low early, unless Jace is fucked down, which I can't really see. Um, that was really good. Okay, that was good. Yeah. Unfortunately, you guys should have expected Zach to be there topside though, just because of the fact that he ganked bot and he like immediately recalled after along with his bot lane. So the only logical place for him to be would be topside. Uh, it's kind of risky. So Zach has two kills now. He's on the board, and what also means is Victor is gonna. So 
what happens right here is Victor is going to miss most of these minions, which means the lane is now evening. And any advantage he had over Malzahar in the 1v1 is gone, and is negated by the fact that Malzahar is now caught up in ESP, even though he hasn't caught up in gold yet. So even though Victor has Hexcore upgrade from getting the kill and getting the early blue buff and shove pressure, that experience differential is negated. And in matchups where both champions scale very well into the late game, early on, the level difference is all that matters. Because later on, it just becomes uh, who who gets the drop on who, but early on, it's just all about the levels and whoever can get the EXP advantage. So Victor had the EXP advantage before, and he could have hit 6 before Malzahar, but now they'll probably hit 6 about somewhat even time. Um, Lee Sin is here to catch the wave, but he's sitting on 1,500 goals, so it's really actually detrimental that he has to be here to catch this wave. So that realm was very poor. Was a poor choice, even though you got the kill on JC, you had to blow both summoners, which leaves you exposed for a Zack gank later, and Zack got another kill on top of that, and you lost a bunch of EXP for it, so not ideal. Okay. Zara's level 3 somehow, holy shit. I don't know what happened. I, need, I, need, I really wish I had a VOD for this game so I could look at all the lanes, because. This is X-Top, Malka should be backing off. You should expect Zack to still remain around topside. Because with Victor pushing up, there's, there's no, there's, like your positioning here is just very poor. He can easily just sneak into a bush and then alt from the bush, or E from the bush rather. Yeah, or just walk through like that. You need to you need to expect that Zach will be there because there's no re like there's no reason for you to be walking up there and just take half your HP and damage when the wave is pushing towards you anyway. Um, especially since with Victor how he was pushing up here, then you could have just expected him. He's either clearing his jungle or he's just going to remain topside because there's not there's nowhere else for him to be right now. Okay. No, this is see because Abdul now has to respond to the pressure that's being put topside. You because you need to just recall and teleport, which means yes, yeah, Zach gank mid already. I need to watch that on the main map. Fuck, I can't. Hold on. Okay, so Zach's gonna gank here. Yeah. So, like after after top got ganked, Victor should be immediately playing towards the bot side instead of the top side, because you know that Zack is on the top side of the map. There's no, there's no way he's going to run from here to here in only 20 seconds. So you should be playing towards the bot side of the map. And Abdul should already be heading down, actually. He shouldn't even bother being up here. He should just let Jafar go recall and come back. So, yeah. This is, this is just poor positioning, and this is, poor, this is a poor read. So Victor's already dead here. Nothing to do about it. <laughs> so Cottony needs to put a ward over here on this on this side. Because you know Zach is gonna recall and start hiding about because he he already cleared everything top side, so he's gonna recall and start hiding about it. So because of like all the pressure that Zach is putting on, Abdul's forced to respond late, and then that means he's he's not able to clear his jungle as efficiently as he would like to, which means he can't actually be proactive on the map because of the fact that laners are getting pressured and not respecting the Zach engage. So you you need to either be very aware of where Zach is and where he's coming from, or you need to just seed control of the lane, and then because you you're like. Not only are the laners being set behind by the Zack gank, but Abdul is also being set behind because he's forced to respond um, to the Zack's pressure. No, that's ac that's actually a fine dive. Because bot lane's getting pressured right now, he should go help them. This this is just poor positioning. Like you guys just grouped up for like for the brand alt for no reason. That's just really. Really a poor play. I would not push this wave out.
It's not frozen. It's gonna push back towards them. It's actually really bad. Like, okay. So here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six here minions for the red side, and one, two, three, four, five. So it would be locked here, but it would slowly start to push back. Especially if you look at like, it would actually freeze towards your team. If you look at the HP of the minions, they could have had a perfect freeze right here. But because you cleared the minion ways, you have team out, which means it evens out the damage that these minions have already taken. And that means that the wave is going to start to push back. So this this breaks the freeze, actually. Um, it doesn't actually set up a freeze, which you did here. If you wanted to last hit, you would have to last hit with Q. So that's, that's that was pretty bad. Okay, Brands in the Dragon Pit, this should be pretty free. Okay, hold on. That was good, but those flashes should not have needed to be blown. If you look here. Okay. So well, let me go back a bit. Okay, so starting from here. You'll see Bran start to walk into the dragon pit. I don't know what the hell he does in there, but Zara should have just kept walking up straight up. Because you've already made the choice. Lee Sin already made the choice to go in and engage. So when the call is made to go in and kill the Bran, Zara should be walking up for support anyway. There should be no reason that you would have to walk up late and then flash to try and get the root at the end. Like, that's, that's just unnecessary. Like, it's good that you landed it, but it, it wouldn't have been necessary in the first place. So... Okay, so Victor got the kill, that's good. As long as Vic Victor getting the gold is always a good idea. This champion just becomes so monstrous. So, yeah, again, you can, like, th this is what I'm saying, guys. This is, like, really simple map awareness stuff. You just have to, like, think about, like, if you're the jungler, right? So if your support is just walking in and inting in, in the dragon pit for no reason, and the Zac doesn't show up to counter gank there, the only other place he's going to be is topside. So you knowing that should immediately back off. There's no reason why you should keep pushing up without any vision. That's like actually unacceptable. It's it's like a really simple thing. You you all, you guys also should have dragon there after you killed Brand. Like. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so like, look here, yeah. So Malzar's off the map, okay? Jin was playing scared under his turret, the support's dead, and Zack still hasn't shown up. This is... You can just expect that Zack should be topside. You don't know where exactly topside, obviously, but you can expect that he'll be topside, and sure enough, you'll see in like a couple seconds, Malkai just dies. <clears throat> Everyone's just pressing R. <sighs> yeah, so missed dragon opportunity there. Um, Zach got another gank off. Snowball's rolling. Zara's overextended. Zara's probably dead. The, the CC there was pretty poor. You should have waited till the Victor gravity field stopped him and then went behind him and then kicked him in and he would have been dead 100%. That was poor CC usage. At this point, all you really need to do is just look to like stem their advantage by just negating Zach's ganks. And that means setting up a vision line right here in their jungle, and then another division line here, so that he can't actually walk to your side of the jungle without getting spotted, and then you can just back off accordingly. That was a really good play by Michael. He, he played it as well as he could have there. Okay, Abdul should push top here. Just shove out the wave. So shove out this wave, and then go get some deep wards in with your uh, smite stun, 
This is the perfect opportunity too. You have ten seconds of free free reign. You should not push the turret here. Because you're not you don't have enough A you don't have enough AD to realistically get the turret. So trying to push this down is is kinda is kinda eh. You because he was gonna okay. If you're a top laner, you're gonna have to TP anyway. This is this is five potential minions that you're gonna miss. So this this is not a TP to save the turret, this is a TP to catch this wave. And so you missed on, on an opportunity you had 10 seconds to, to get deep wards in the jungle, which would have negated Zach's gank's top side for the next 22 minutes. So, that that means, because you know if he's top side or not, once you put those wards in, then you'll also know if he's if he might be bot lane or not. Or bot side, rather. So, yeah. And also, there's no... I didn't see a single QSS being built this game, which is, like, actually ridiculous. You have to get a QSS early versus Maltar. It, it, even if it's, like, second or third item, like, you have to get it early. Even if it delays your core items, it's just... It's just too much power that you're giving to him if you don't have QSS. And you, you make the champion completely useless if you do buy a QSS, so... Like, just think about it right now, right? Yeah? So... This realistically, Makai is never gonna be able to get a chance to get this turret alone without a gank assistance. So there's there's no chance of this turret going down anytime soon unless Leeson comes up and ganks again, or Victor goes up in rooms, or Zara goes up in rooms, or something. Then they can get the turret. But that's probably not gonna happen since bot lane is already losing and mid lane kind of has to play back because of the Zach threat, right? So you spending the time to all attack that turret instead of putting the wards in this side of the jungle would have meant means that you just lost a lot of, a big chance on information that you could have easily gotten. So this entire side of the map would have been lit up and you would have known if Zach was top and therefore Maka can play as aggressively or as passively as he wants without having to worry about where Zach is. And because you know if he's top side farming or not, then you'll also know, as I said before, if he's bot side. And then you can plan where you're going to go accordingly. So... Zach spot side, you should instantly back up. He can eat you. One step. Honestly, if if you just legit buy a QSS second item, like after first hex car upgrade, then you can just really gank Malzahar really easily because you don't need to worry about dying to him. Oh, Zach's heading bot side. Zach's heading bot side. Okay, mid needs to back up. Vig needs to, mid needs to back up, yeah. Like, being that, being that close is already pretty risky. Okay, expect Zach to still be bot side. Yep, there he is. Do not, do not, do not. No, uh, he does a whole thing. Yeah. Like this is this is what I'm saying. If you had a QSS second item, not only does it give you MR, but you can also just run away from the, um, from the ulti. You have like it. It sucks to have that kind of tax, but. It's so necessary versus that champion. That's like part of that's part of the power that Malzahar brings. Like it's not only his objective immunity is insane, like game scaling, but just having to force everyone to buy all the carries to buy QSS is is a pretty pretty strong aspect of his kit. So that was a good TP bot to punish overextension. That was very good. Yeah, good. That that was like what Jafar just did right there. Like actually it relieved so much of the map pressure that you guys lost. So that's really good. So yeah, that, that was good by Jafar. <sighs> top lane TP is like, top laner TPing at the right time can sink, like just bring you back into the game so easily. So him killing Jace and then also killing Jinbot is really huge. Plus that means Jafar is that much more unkillable, so realistically, 
they won't be able to kill him anymore. Like, you, you see this, like, he's not going to take any damage. You need to be careful from Alzar cutting you off here. I don't know if... That's my recall. It was a really obvious bait, but that was really well played. Okay, so the force JC. Jafar can get it. You should you should just let him get it. You're missing time on jungling here. That's inefficient. The run by Victor didn't lose him anything. Oh, that was really clean. That was well played. Well played. You just need to d dip out as fast as possible. You should sapling. You should okay. You should have sapling way earlier. Yeah, you guys are good. Oh, rip laser. This is really good. So like, you see how like squishy Malzahar is. Like his only threat is just being able to ult on you. But if you can't even do that, then that was really nice. Yeah, Jafar has played that really well. <laughs> Uh, what you should have done there, Jafar, is you should have stopped playing the bush, so that would have proc the spell shield, and then you could have CC'd him. And then Victor would have come in right after, and then killed him. But it's, it's, that's just picking hairs, like, because one of you is probably going to die either way, so it's not a big deal. So you force Jace TP, that's really a big cooldown. Used to do recall. Like, at this point, the game is still very even, by the way. Like, no turrets have gone down, the lanes are still, like, farming pretty well. They're pretty even in CS, like even though bot lane has a slight advantage in terms of actual lane control, like it's not it's not anything that's like unwinnable, so yeah. Yeah, you bot bot lane can't can't get any ward pressure. They they're not they don't have the HP for it. The the I I think okay. At this point this this entire waste of map pressure is just a completely unnecessary and unwarranted because look at this you have you live you left your victor who is 25 percent hp top lane versus the jace who just tp <coughs> so instantly maokai you just seed this turret victor recalls because maokai already recalled yeah so victor and maokai recall you five man dragon instantly because jace already tp top there's no way they can contest with jace top lane you guys will win the 5v5 and now already ulted so you guys just get a free dragon. Instead, you guys give up dragon control because you wanted to save a 25% HP turret. Not, not even 25% HP, 10% HP turret. So dragon's gone. That's just really poor resource allocation and greed to save a turret. That like completely wasn't necessary. They were even late to the dragon call. So you guys could have actually been like 10 seconds later and still would have been able to contest if you just sent everybody bot lane. Like... Don't worry about saving the turrets, guys, because turrets you can get whenever, okay? It's the neutral objectives that matters. That's really good assassination on Bran. Assassination by Zarya. Malzahar's running down, so you should, guys should just instant dip out. <laughs> Thank God for Zarya plant to slow Malzahar. You just let, send Caitlyn here and then send Mal, uh, Victor Victor to mid. Malzar's getting blue. Okay, just got blue. Like I I don't I don't know about this because I I think Brand will be back soon and you guys can push versus Zach. You you guys should you should have just went mid with uh, Victor and then put pressure on Malzar. Yeah, good night. Good block. That was a really good block. Good night, flip us. It was nice knowing you. So yeah, you, like this this is just like again poor resource really poor resource allocation. It's not even that like Zach is like doing anything. It's just you guys are just walk like moving moving your resources in really weird spots at really random times. Like it's just bad decisions all over. It's not even that Zach is like super busted or anything. Like him getting fed is not is not the reason why you guys lost this game. It's just because you guys just went to the wrong place at the wrong time. And that was just stupid. You know better. I'm not gonna pick on that too much. 
Okay, so, so again, let, let me highlight how this whole like chain of events started, yeah? Because you guys chose to greed for the top lane turret, they got bot lane turret, which means after the, they got dragon, you guys went bottom to contest them for no objective. So then Malzahar starts roaming down because bot lane picks a fight. Uh, yeah, because Zyra dies. So bot lane go, so you guys go try to defend this turret after they already have resources bot lane because of the fact that this you guys weren't all already bot lane. So that means you have everyone out of position. Maokai's not there. Jace is top. He's going to get that turret anyway, regardless. Like, what this wave or next wave, it doesn't matter. Um, so then you guys choose to push this turret instead of sending Lucian mid to pressure mid, which would have forced Zach to go there, because realistically, if you just have Caitlyn here, then Jin can't do anything to stop Caitlyn from pushing because of her traps. So Zach will be forced to come mid, which means you're there to help counter gank if need be, because you had ult at the time. So you just 2v2 mid while Caitlyn pushes bot until Brand shows up. But instead you guys just sent two people bot. So Zach of course is going to go counter counter gank bot. And then you guys lose a turret because you guys picked a fight. Okay, Brand clearing out control. You still need to set up your world lane. Like versus certain champions, you gotta keep like repeating the same thing over and in, over in your head. Zank is like Zach is like gank line or ward line, ward line, ward line. You you need to have that set up. I wouldn't have thrown the Q until uh, Zara landed root because it's just not worth it. So right here, Jafar, Jafar, that was a really good room by Jafar. It's like, yeah, you need to be careful there, Jafar. You, I don't know if you have any MR. I don't think you do. I think you're like full armor. Somehow, wait, what the, <laughs> what the hell? All right, Jafar, lived. okay, Jafar should just head top. All right, Zach should be dead here. All right, his chunk pretty low. Yeah. You guys should be able to get mid pretty easily. Jace is inting. Jace is inting. The fact that a 1-5 Jace actually does this much damage is like pretty stupid. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, give Victor blue and then recall. Or give Victor blue do uh, wolves and then recall. Because I, I think you need, or Grom. You, you need it, yeah, but give Victor blue and then go defend me. The problem is, like, yeah, so Abdul says, like, every time you guys play against Zach, you lose, and that's not even because the champion's, like, super busted, it's just because you guys, like, overextend, and then Zach obviously has really long engage range, so he can punish overextensions pretty easily. I, like, I don't think it's the champion that's, like, the problem. This is just really dumb. Okay, yeah, you guys, yeah, so this is, this is a good call by Chris, just push them in the turret, because you guys have pressure... And positioning mid. Okay, I'm gonna go help your team. Victor's dead. There needs to be MR bot and QSS's bot on Victor and but and Caitlyn. Like it's there's no excuse to not have it as a second or third item. It needs to be a bot because the longer you you stay without buying it, the longer you just. Just give uh nice this is really good. <laughs> so tanky. Uh oh, sorry, is that Abdul needs to buy armor here. He because he's he's not realistically gonna be enough of a damage, so he's not fed enough, so you he ha he has to um 
has to get armor, because the only thing that matters is not getting insta-bursted by Jin. Right, so Baron control is gone because of that. So after Victor died, you guys should have just all dipped out. Was, you shouldn't have stayed to contest. <clears throat> Good night, Baron. And like the the reason why Jace is foot pushing is because he doesn't need to do anything else. Like you guys are just dying for free, so he can just push for free and take turrets. There's no reason for him to be anywhere else. He doesn't need to group right now. Don't at this okay. Once it hits the mid game, guys, don't ever like die for a, a neutral objective because. It's it's just honestly not worth it. There's there's way too much at stake at that point. Baron's up. Usually Drake's are up. You don't you don't have to die to give up to just to take a turret because that's something. Again, like tur turrets, you can get at any point in the game. It's not too difficult. You just win a team fight and you can go push down turrets pretty easily. Don't don't ever greed for turrets. Take it when it's free, but don't greed for it. Not worth it. Yeah, this you should just go mid. That was a good try. This is really good. So, hold on. This this fight, you see this positioning? Malzahar overextends, Brand overextends, Jin overextends as well. So they're all positioned in this nice little tight area. So Zarya can get a nice AoE snare and AoE ulti off, along with Maokai just insta-diving onto the Jin. So, Malzahar is dead. That's really good. This fight's already won. Jace gets exhausted. He's useless. Sitting in the victor ulti. He's dead. Brand's dead. This game should be over. Like this, this game right here, they lost any map pressure they had in this game, right here. They, it's over. Okay, now you just push mid. You should be able to get in hit pretty easily. You have a wave. Jafar should just go recall. Jafar doesn't need to be here. You should just recall. You might, okay, you won't be able to get inhib, but you can get inhib turret. Get inhib turret and back. Jafar should just recall right now. Yeah, just dip out. You should, Jafar should stop playing behind him, just so he can get a slow of people try to chase. Yeah, see, Jafar, because Jafar, tanks contribute minimal damage, so Jafar should have just recalled and started pushing that wave out already. Now he's going to, this turret's going to take a bunch of damage, he's going to miss a bunch of EXP. And I disagree completely with the Titanic Hydra buy here. Abdul needed to buy Randuins first. He would be a much less threat from Jin by having the Randuins. Yeah, that's a really good TP. Spot. That's a very good TP spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're already committed to the siege here, so there's nothing they can do. And Jafar is behind the minion wave, so they can't actually see his TP. <laughs> like, the, the, okay, yeah. So the thing the thing that's nice about having... See, if you, if you had uh, randoms, you would have taken much less damage there. The, the thing with... See, like, the thing with having nice... Again, no QSS... Uh, the thing with having a huge fed tank like that, 6A, <laughs> um, with having a fed tank like that is that you can, he can just literally engage a fight and tank for like 5-6 seconds while you guys just walk over. So that was a really good call by Jafar to TP. You guys should have, you guys were right to wait because you don't want to just insta eat like all the brand ulti and combo and Malzahar ulti, but yeah, you guys could definitely win that fight. So you guys should get the inhib and just back. <laughs> I don't even think Jafar should go Banshee, he should just go GA. He should go GA. The, okay, the reason why you go GA here instead of Banshee's Veil is because you already have the Spirit Visage, and Malzahar is not realistically going to target you with damage. His target is going to be one of the backline carries, um, because he wants to be able to set them up for Zack and Brand to kill him. So, the only time he would ever use his ulti on you is if you go in with no one else there, and in that case, GA is still better, because... It's too easy for Banshees to be popped by a spell, and then just you get ulted anyway. 
it's much better to have a second life so that you can tank your full HP bar and then come back up with more HP and still be able to tank and heal up. This is a really good escape. <laughs> that was a good use of the plant. <laughs> I actually got out. <laughs> Alright. This, this is pretty easy. This this game is pretty easy mode from here on out. Like You guys have an inhib down, so they have to commit someone. They have really low wave clear on their team. Jin has not as decent wave clear, but it's not great. Mazar has decent wave clear, but it's not great. Bran is okay for wave clear. Um, so you just send Maokai bot lane to go push down the turret. And then you just keep a four-man top side uh, based on Maokai's TP cooldown. I don't, I don't know his cooldown because I can't see it. You guys need to just dip out top lane for a bit. Just let, let them push in, let them push in. Jafar should not be that far up. I don't, it doesn't even matter. Like, he's so overextended here. There's no reason for him to be there. Victor already left. So that's just stupid. There's no reason to die there. Victor already left. There's no reason to die. Having QSS sort of saved you there. Uh, and again, the rethrow has just occurred. So getting getting a pick on Malzahar is quite nice. Uh, unfortunately, you're dead. And you got to kill on Zach. It's 3 for 2. It's not terrible, but it's not ideal either. Zara has ulti soon, so you guys can definitely... If, if Zara lands an ulti, she can... Or lands a snare, rather, she can definitely kill, kill him. Okay, so I have to back up. This is poor positioning. It was a bad idea. Like, okay, guys, I know you know better, but I don't know, like, what happens in these situations. You're just, like, not thinking for a bit, but when it's three versus two on the map and your teammates are spawning soon, why do you want to go greed for a kill that's 50-50 when you can just wait for your teammates to come up and then you can use the map pressure that you have from a down in hip and just push another turret? Because... Doing shit like that just stalls the game out longer. Now you have another man down for 30, 27 seconds, and these guys are coming up soon, so it's going to be a 5v4. So they have map control until that happens. So they can go Ward Baron, do whatever they want, and you guys can't contest. But this, this is what I'm saying. Like, the, the, like even, even though Jafar died there, and then Victor died after, it's still, and Abdul died also, like, it's still not a big deal, because... Their death timers coincided with your death timers, so they would be. Uh, you guys would both be up and five v five at the same time, and you guys are much better at objective control because of Caitlyn traps and Victor and Zara. Like you guys have such good choke control, they can't actually like face check you. They they can't realistically Baron versus Zara. Zyra can just flash snare ulti and just kill kill Jin pretty easily. And chunk Malzahar and Brand pretty low as well. Alright, now you just run straight straight to Baron. Straight to Baron. Yeah, they're out of position. You guys should be able to fight this pretty easily. It's a pretty good Zara ult. Splits up the fight quite nicely. Victor needs to be careful here. Okay. Oh, the TPGs. Yeah. See, having GA right there would have completely won you with the fight. Nice. Nice. They just did it back up here. Okay, so let's go back and look at that fight, because that was really messy. Start of that fight. Okay. You should not have flashed there. You guys, you guys should have just. You should have just stayed here with uh, your carry, or you should have flashed and interrupted this guy's TP uh, earlier, so that you could kill Zach. But it doesn't matter because Zach's like dead anyway. Um, this is a good pick on Mal's, and like Leeson dies here. Having if you had randoins, you would have lived like hundred percent because of the crit reduction, and you could have also randoins to slow him, and then he would have died.
All right, so at this point, you just trade it again. Like at this point, you might as well just assume that like their tanks are negligible because the only thing they're offering is CC. Like Zyra will mop them really fast, and Caitlyn will mop them really fast, and so will Victor actually. So it's not a big deal for you to. It's not. It's pretty easy for you to chunk Zach out. Um, Jace is like pretty strong as well, but you can kill him pretty easily. He's he can't. He doesn't really have a way in in these team fights. Yeah, Zara is Zara is always very good at shredding tanks. Uh, if I were Zara, I would either buy Vanchisville or I would just get a QSS. That W disappeared. That was really strange. So I need to be careful mid. Maka should just walk around and fl get a flank. Threaten them off. This is good. Yeah, having having GA here would be really nice. You guys should still be able to win this fight pretty easily. Oh, not if you all walk into the brand ulti though. Alright. Yeah, so again, having Randoins there would be very, very important. Like, if you had Randoins, GA instead of Titanic Hydra, it, it would have been much better. Because you, you don't need to worry about going in. Right, so he flashed into, your, into his team, they insta CC'd you. Okay. So you die here. Makai dives in. I don't like the dive onto Jace because at this point, like, you're too separated from the carries. You need to be on Malzahar because he's overextended. Now, if, if you, if you root, if you W and then Q Malzahar because the spell shield procs and then you Q him, then he eats all the victor laser plus the victor ulti that's about to come out. So, uh, it's already used, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So the victor, like he, Malzahar would be twenty five percent HP, and he'd just be running away. So this this team fight was like very poorly played. That was just actually terrible. Okay. Yeah. So okay. That was game one. That was very unclean. Yeah, so most of this game was like lost to poor resource allocation. It wasn't even like... There was poor resource allocation in the early mid game, and then there was terrible... There was two good team fights that you guys should have had... That you had map pressure with, but you guys threw it away because you went for greed kills after, and then just died for no reason, so that like negated any map pressure you had. And then there was like that terrible team fight at the end that lost you the game, so yeah.